Hello, everyone. We wanted to welcome you today. How's everyone doing today? We appreciate you coming to the webinar with us here at Study. And so we're going to be doing a presentation on a webinar on improving teacher attendance and understanding the effectiveness of improving the teacher attendance within your school district. And we'll be kind of doing a co-host today with Jeff Smith will be helping as well and going through this with us. Good morning. Uh, there you are. Yeah, I'm, I'm here and I think uh, Kelly's here. Let's see what we have here. Uh, anyway, we'll introduce it in just a minute, but I wanted to make sure my microphone was working. We're in all different locations, so we can't see each other and, and uh, coordinate this. So we'll see how this goes. It does I'm make here, it a little challenging. I don't say much. <laughs> Kelly's here as well. Kelly, welcome. This will be good. Go ahead, Sam. Oh, we just, so part of being here with us, we, we love your participation. As usual, if you haven't been a part of our, our Zoom meetings in the past, uh, we do ask a lot of questions. We do like to get participation from those who are attending. So in the chat section, um, if, if you can make comments there when we ask, that'd be great. We actually end up posting these comments afterwards. We do a little bit of editing just to make sure that we're not, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that, that is being said, but we, we put down what's applicable and interesting to those who are participating in it. So, so your comments are very helpful to those who attend. Therefore, you don't have to take too many notes as well as we try to provide all this information to you uh, after the presentation is done. Um, if you on the very bottom of the chat section, if you see down there, it says the two pan all panelists. If you can just click on that and change that to be all panelists and attendees, that way we can make sure that everyone is seeing your comments because it just defaults it to just panelists. And so if you can change it to all panelists and attendees, that, that way everyone can see and, and participate together. Um, that that's that's exactly what we like to know so if, if if you have any questions you can also ask us you can also raise your hand so just as a way of introduction steady has been around since 1996 is that right jeff 95 95 so for 20 25 years we've been around um kind of the uh, company that started out, out of uh, understanding the need of substitute teachers and how we could help then be better and more efficient in classroom managers as they were, you know, we've identified for years the, the need for substitute teachers. And so we really wanted to make sure that we understood how we can make teachers, substitute teachers more efficient uh, in the classroom. So Steady started that, Jeff started that back in 1995 and it's kind of grown since then. So I'm, I'm over the, the sales and marketing. Kelly Stone is our VP of client success. So a lot of you probably know her if you work with us already. And Jessica Smith is Jeff's daughter. She oversees all of the curriculum and development of, of the study program. So she is the brains behind a lot of what we do and is very valuable and an asset to us. And if you any of you need her or have any questions about substitute teaching in that regard, um, she'd be happy to answer your questions. And then of course, Jeff Smith, Definitely reach out to Jeff anytime. Uh, he's a great resource as well to help facilitate the needs that you guys have for your districts. Jessica is not on the call with us today. She's actually just outside painting our building. We're remodeling <laughs> the building and um, we uh, decided we've contracted everything out except for the painting. And uh, so she's out there. And as soon as we're done here, I'll be doing my share. We've been doing that for the last week or so. And uh, so that's, she's multi-talented in being able to paint. So if you hear also road noise, it's because my window was taken out, removed, and I have a piece of plywood that is not as quite as soundproof as the window is. So that's what I get to see for my view as a piece of plywood. But um, hopefully you can, you, there won't be too much uh, road, road noise. We're right on Main Street, and so sometimes it gets a little noisy. But thanks for being here. Very much so. We appreciate it. Um, so again, today we're talking about improving teacher attendance and how that affects the substitute 
uh, department, right? How that really affects you, because it, it, simply because it's it's quite easy, right? Because teachers are gone, there's a need that arises. Therefore, you hire substitutes. So if you're having fill rate issues, if you're having really trying to understand how you can improve the fill rates, understanding the the teacher attendance and how we can improve that will actually help increase your fill rates as well because you'll have the teachers the substitute you need to fill in those those teachers who are gone and so that's what today's discussion is going to be about jeff is going to be talking quite a bit about this he has a lot of understanding and and knowledge and experience in this and so he'll be probably leading the discussion for the most part and then there's some questions that we will be asking and talking about throughout the discussion today as well so again Please make sure you make comments on the chat feature and ask any questions you can. And then as we move forward, uh, please participate and, and hope we can answer all your questions that you, you may have. The, the couple of things I'll, I'll kind of start off with is there's the demand of substitute teachers comes from two main reasons, right? They're gonna leave for a personal reason, right? Sick leave, personal leave, there's lots of reasons, vacation, marriage, you know, and then, and then their kids are getting sick then there's also professional leave where there's staff development, there's trainings um, all around the country. There's you know online trainings like we have today, um, and there's a lot of other professional development leave um, and school days that are that our teachers are not going to be at. And so today we'll talk a little more about this and how this applies. Um, Jeff, if you want to for, go ahead and for speak, us we what we for what we for our purposes we don't distinguish between the two now if we want to help reduce uh, teacher absenteeism we will talk about the difference uh, and where we're coming from is to continue the learning uh, while the permanent teachers out of the classroom that's where we focus on substitute teachers and and so if they're out of the classroom it it doesn't matter to the students if it's for professional leave or for or uh, personal leave if they're out of the classroom they're out of the classroom and so we we always focus on the total number of absences and then um, how do we make sure the learning can continue but in today's discussion we'll talk a little bit about personal leave and professional leave but uh, most of what we focus on so when we talk about teacher absenteeism that is both per personal and professional leave uh, and so if, if we talk about uh, 10 percent teacher absenteeism that's those two together it's just not the personal leave this is, uh, when we started looking into this, this is where we came up with uh, and found out that, uh, and started to talk about one full year of a child's K-12 education is taught by a substitute teacher um, once they graduate from high school. And so if, let's just say if it's at 10%, then 10% of the 13 years, the kindergarten through 12th grade, that 13, you know, 10% of 13 is 1.3 years of a child's K-12 education. If it's 8%, then 8% times 13 years, it's about one year. So if, it, if, the, if your absenteeism rate is 8% and above, and that means if it is um, uh, for both professional and permanent, uh, sorry, professional and personal leave, then, it, uh, then a student in your district would spend a, uh, over a full year uh, with a substitute teacher. And so it's not an insignificant amount of time. And, and so that's why it's important that we address that and, and be able to, to, to talk about that. So uh, this absenteeism rate teachers, uh, and is it compared to all college education, college educated workers, college educated workers in public service? Uh, and nurses. Now you can see the difference between male and female and below at the bottom of the chart you can see teachers with 74% uh, of those responding were teachers, 48% with college educated were female. And so there is a different percentage between male and female in each one of those categories but, but we can see and that tends to show what it is. There's a lot of reasons for that. You know again the and this statistic here is is based on personal leave only. As you can see, it doesn't include, include professional leave. Now, you know, granted, for professional leave, uh, you know, they're not out of work. They're just doing another assignment on that given day. But this is for per, uh, personal leave, and so it is a little higher 
for teachers. It, uh, it's the same as nurses, if you will. And, and that has to do with, they deal with a lot of public uh, people. And, and so they tend to get sick and have other things uh, where they need to be uh, done out of the classroom. Um, now, uh, Frontline Education has published some statistics and, and uh, which we appreciate. In fact, I'm gonna ask this right now. I'm gonna pop up something here. Um, I have a poll, sorry. Do you want me to launch that for you, Jeff? I think yeah, I can launch you, it for you. Oh, you probably had, because you're you're the host. Yeah. yeah. So launch. <laughs> it's the first call, see. right? Automated yeah. System. Right. Yeah. So tell me. Uh, there it is. So what automated calling system do you have? Uh, if you want it, Frontline. You know, Smart Find Express is part of Frontline now, and every everything else related to Frontline, or Smart Find Express, or the eSchool solutions, or if there's other. If you don't mind letting me know what it is and as soon as we have pretty much everybody who's um uh, who's on the call today can respond then let's go ahead and uh close it and then share when you get that okay some have ch chatted if you don't mind putting that there we go so it looks like uh uh 71 percent have frontline uh, Smart Find Express is 18%, 12 is other. I should have asked what other, uh, go ahead in the chat feature and put other. I would assume my PowerSchool may be another one that, that people may be yeah, using. Yeah, PowerSchool is the Smart, is the eSchool. Is that, school. okay. Yeah. So in the chat feature, if you put other, maybe it's you, uh, Time Clock Plus, okay. What about, uh, thanks Gary, what about, uh, you know, no sys online system, you just do the, the phone calling yourself. Yeah. Okay. So that's um, very good. All right. Go ahead and close that. Uh, so the front line, they've uh, put together some statistics, which we appreciate. And um, according to their uh, statistics, the average number of absences per employee requiring a sub, these are, le these are days. At, uh, so 11 days uh, in 11 11.116 for those two years and 11.11 for 18-19 school year. Not requiring a substitute is 26 uh, and so forth. Now, I don't know, they didn't qualify this if this is for personal or professional. I kind of tend to think it's just for uh, personal leave because once I calculated, if we took 11 days divided by 180 day uh, school year, it comes out to 6.2. The figure below the 26.88 is it divided by 180 days is 15%. So that's kind of uh, each one of those years is pretty consistent. Uh, last three years, full years, this is what the full year is, is 6.2. Um, and again, they, they don't distinguish if it's professional or personal leave, but uh, I, I'll talk a little bit about that later it, and I might ask you how does this reflect uh, to, with your system if you have uh, if you know what your absence is per employee or if your absenteeism rate please put that in notice this this was kind of interesting 23 percent of employees requiring a substitute had perfect attendance during the 2018-2019 school year you know so I don't know if you do anything to highlight them and recognize them but that's pretty awesome that's pretty awesome, ne nearly one in uh, four that way. So this is the average number of absences per employee. And you can see that there's urban, suburban, and rural. And then they broke it down into, so you could have an urban small district. You can have an urban medium-sized district, an urban large district, urban extra large district. So it, it's interesting that the urban, it's the small and the extra large almost across the board have smaller, less teacher absenteeism rate. So in your opinion, uh, in your school system, what is the num go ahead, number one reason teachers request time off? Go ahead and in the chat feature, put, put your, uh, what the number one reason is teacher take time off. And this is kind of a simple question. We just wanted, we just wondered what, 
you know, you, you you hear from the substitutes and you hear from the teachers. We're just wondering what what what, what people are saying, what people are hearing. Uh, it's just a way to kind of. We assume it's going to be probably some similar things, but we just thought it'd be an interesting question to to ask initially. You know, um, uh, I've seen a chart, and I I don't have it on here, but it re is relevant to this. Teacher absenteeism rates tends to be between eight to ten percent. Uh, until the summer months, and then it's 100%. I don't know what we do with the summer, but absenteeism <laughs> rate for teachers tend to, to skyrocket to 100% during June, July, and August. We should do a webinar on that. Yeah, that just that one. Improve yeah, that. Teacher absenteeism during the summer months. Professional development in the year of new adoption. Oh, that makes sense when you're trying to implement a new program, 10 professional development. Well, according to uh, frontline uh, percent of absences by reason. You were right, the illnesses, 45% is the bottom, uh, and then personal, and then other. Now, as you notice, the darker color, and if we add all those up, it comes to 87% of the absences are that are registered through the system are personal uh, requests for per personal leave and then business. So it's field trips, school business and professional development add up to the other 13%. So it's, um, it's heavily rated to for personal. Um, let me ask you, does this uh, reflect your experience? Um, meaning does do all the absences get placed in the system or is it covered in other ways? when when they, they might be out of the classroom, but a substitute is not required. And so would you say there's other prof professional reasons they're out of the classroom that's not recorded? And in the chat feature, could you mind uh, either validating this statistics that only 13% are per personal or professional reasons, or do you think there are additional professional reasons that they're out of the classroom, but not requiring a substitute so it's not reflected? What would you think? Additional curriculum writing and testing, so they might be out. Uh -huh. Not all absences are placed in the system for meetings, et cetera, when they have in-house coverage. Okay, is that a common thing, Dol Dolores? Yeah, that's interesting. Um, yes, if staff, uh, personal doesn't require a sub, they are not reflected in the frontline system. So it could be higher, it could be greater than 13%. I see, so uh, it, it, for half days or full days, but if they had just an hour or two or a period or two and had to go to the doctor or something and got covered by another teacher covering, okay. Oh, not all attendees are responding to panelists, to all panelists and attendees. So. Yeah, we'll copy this and, and we'll have that, but make sure that when you are responding, you're doing it to all uh, panelists and to attendees as well. Thanks. That's good because we want to see them. So I'll try to read those if it shows that. Do you want to re-ask that question again? So yeah, Dolores, really quick. yeah. Uh, so the question is, um, you know, if you're uh, are there absences that are not reported to the system? And if so, why? And so it looks like, uh, we'll copy this, but for example, I'm gonna copy this latest one uh, from Dolores uh, and then put that out there. Is that okay, Dolores? That came from um, Dolores, for, uh, So, but it came from me from, we also record counselors, program facilitators, psychologists, RSP teachers, reported do not need coverage yeah so there is some distinction between the two yeah good all right well this is fascinating and i because i do think it's greater than this the 13 percent uh that they're out of the classroom uh but this is reported to the system professionally related absences account for 16 percent of all absences as compared to 17 and 15 16 and 17 and 16 and 17. That's this latest one. Fill rates have fallen for 2018-19 school year as, substitute, as substitutes worked fewer days on average 
and nearly half of all substitutes did not work at all. Now, this isn't really related to teacher absenteeism, but it was part of their report, and I thought I'd throw that in. That's interesting that they said uh, the reason is that the fill rates have fallen because substitutes work fewer days and half the substitutes didn't work at all. So the, the pool is not as active as it used to be, uh, and the pool size tends to be smaller as well, but still half the substitutes do not work at all. So we, that's another, that's a whole different topic and we'll talk about that, but that was in the report. Okay, another one is the average fill rate. And again, because it was in the report, I thought to throw it 16, 17 is 84, then 82 and then 80. So it is dropping in the last three years. And again, uh, last year, 2018, 2019 is the la latest full year. And then look at the number of substitutes not working. It's increased to 50%. So we could talk about that. Didn't mean to do that. Okay. Now, here's some of uh, Steady's results. And we've done uh, th these uh, results that I'm going to present here are from different surveys that we've done and different studies that we've done. But this is interesting. The principal's access to teacher absentee absent monitoring technology, meaning the substitute calling system, appears to result in lower teacher absenteeism, nearly 14% difference. Now that doesn't mean that there's 14% less teacher absenteeism, it's just the difference between the two is 14%. So, it, but it has made a difference if they have, principals have access to it. Now when principals perform Performance reviews are associated with their teacher's absence, attendance, teacher uh, absences is significantly lower at 4%. Now that's huge. Uh, so two, two thoughts here. One, uh, principal's access to data is important and principal's performance is associated with teacher attendance, then absenteeism is lower. Teacher's incentive not to be absent seems to be positively influenced teacher attendance. So any programs that you might have to incentivize uh, teacher attendance, that seems to, to reduce the absenteeism rate by 4.5%. Um, there is discussion and there is an article that I'll reference that you can look up, but uh, they talk about the difference between the stick and the carrot. Uh, meaning a stick is uh, is pu punishment if they're out or a uh, carrot if they if they're incentives and uh, we always think that incentives work better than the stick does so let's ask this how do you regularly share data with your principals could you uh, have everyone uh, share that how you regularly share data with your principals make sure you respond to um, all, all panelists and attendees and not just to panelists. There in the and another note too, is if, if, if you're not, if you're not um, on a regular basis sharing data with your principals, let us know. We'd be interested to know that as well as that was one of the key components of the survey itself that suggested that those, those uh, principals who were getting that data, getting, getting that input information was helpful to them to talk to those talk to their teachers and help with the absenteeism. I think everybody's seeing these responses. These are good. Secretaries from inform the principals daily. So Barb, if you'll turn yours to panelists and all attendees and then repost that. Okay, so it looks like we're sharing uh, information different ways, posting it or having people report it to their principals. You know, principles um, with given data can uh, can be helpful. Also, do you, uh, let me ask you: Do you share district-wide data with your principals? So you can share data if just relating to their his or her school. But what about do you provide data to district-wide so they can compare their teacher attendance and their teacher absenteeism? Uh, and their fill rates across all. Yes, for as far as fill rates go, good. So yeah, so they can compare and see why they're they're at eighty five percent, and you have other schools at ninety five percent. You share that kind of data. 
And I th can I add a little comment there? I think one of the purposes that would be helpful, at least that I think of, for sharing that kind of information around the whole district is not that you want to point out specific schools or anything, but just that perhaps other other schools, other principals are doing things that are helping to either increase or decrease, you know, different statistics, different numbers. But if you see a principal that has a really low absentee rate, maybe reaching out to those, you know, principals or finding out what it is they're doing could be helpful to those schools who may be having a difficult time. So weekly punch report auto auto emails to principals is good. Good. Thanks, Gary. All right, fascinating. Well, those are there. We'll, like I, we've said several times, we'll copy this and make this part of the handout so you can see that. All right, here's some more survey results. Um, uh, what is your base? So, what was your, is your base? Sorry, what is your absenteeism rate for 2018, 2019? This is based on our own survey. And you can see where it falls there. Uh, more than 11%, there were over 20% of the respondents said that they were over uh, 11%. We tend to think, we tend to find that inner city uh, schools tend to have the highest teacher absenteeism rate um, where they need the students need the consistency the most. They sometimes get it the least because the teachers are absent more there. Good, good, good comments. I'm, I got to keep moving on, but I want to read these comments. So I'll, I'll keep going. How satisfied are you with teach your teacher absenteeism rate? So this is, I should say, teacher attendance rate. This is uh, for principals responded to this. So some are sat very satisfied, somewhat satisfied, some what not satisfied and, and very not satisfied. So uh, a little, little uh, slightly higher with uh, satisfied than not satisfied, but still I'd say 60-40. So 40% are not really satisfied with their attendance rate with their teachers. Uh, okay, so 10%, by the way, if there's any typos in this, it's because I didn't let, give Kelly a chance to proofread my slides. She's usually very, very good. So it's it's not her fault, but that's totally mine. <laughs> if I typed, there's some typos. And and uh, Kelly, you can point them out so I can fix them and we'll repost the handouts. Teacher, and so 10 additional days of teacher absences are associated with a decline between 1.7 to 3.3% of standard deviation in math achievement. So that's interesting. So there have been statistics and, and there are the links down below. Um, uh, this, uh, the bottom one, the Brookings uh, Institute, the, uh, uh, that article there, we should not just focus, be focused on absenteeism uh, among, sorry, we should be focusing on absenteeism among teachers, not just students. That article is a very good blog post and it included the other two links. And so if you wanna look at that, the bottom one, there, that's a fascinating article, uh, too much that I didn't wanna cover it here, but it did talk about, there is data showing that the high absenteeism rate does affect student achievement. And um, th those are very good articles there. So just for information, another quick question. Do you expect substitute, the substitute teacher to continue the learning process uh, for the teacher when they are substituting? This is a given, absolutely, <laughs> you bet. We want that learning. So part of what we need to do is make sure we set them up for success. And of course we can't go a webinar without saying training probably has the biggest impact <laughs> for this. And so we wanna make sure our substitutes are trained regardless of what our absenteeism rate we do want that. You know, even in, in districts where there's collective bargaining or union, uh, it doesn't, uh, the teachers union are very in favor of training substitutes because if there's a problem when a permanent teacher's out of the classroom, it just looks bad on the teachers and uh, that they're out of the classroom. And so they tend to be very supportive. Uh, so there's always a win-win-win for everybody when um, student learning continues and it can be done. And um, so, 
Okay, good, good question. All right, some incentives. We talked a little bit about some incentives um, to for teacher attendance. Spring ISD awarded ninety-three thousand dollars in teacher incentives during everyday count attendance drawing. So this is you can see that on their uh, website. They uh, that was kind of a fascinating thing. Good luck typing that in and finding that, but that's uh, <laughs> that's there. Also another incentive. Uh, Tioga Junior High School received an award from the, I think it is uh, from the Rapids Parish Schools Board for the first quarter. And you can see this was a sign that's up in their school recognizing this middle school for having the highest teacher attendance during the previous grading period. Notice they got to, uh, Sonic to uh, donate the a billboard they probably just moved that around the, from school to school but that's good so recognizing is and taking time to to acknowledge it so there are incentives in and people want to be pr a part of a winning team or a winning group and so by really bringing uh, up incentives to uh, highlight recognition as well as uh, rewarding them for, for doing that. What incentives is your district providing to improve teacher attendance? Let's ask that question. So for those of you who might not know, and, and if it's done on the uh, school level, that could be something that you as a uh, district office could do is sh get that information shared uh, around uh, and finding out what, to, you know, so if you hear of something, and you might be able to say, hey, this was a good idea and share with other schools. Often they want to do something, it's just they don't know what. And in today's world, we sure share best practices easy with social media as well as emails and, and highlight certain things. So that's good. Hey, Jeff, Carmen said that, that one year they had a local uh, auto dealer donate a car to... What? The person who had the best, I guess I'm assuming that's what it was, who had the best attendance record for the year. Awesome. <laughs> that's a really great idea. Yeah, that is. Oh, Temple ISD does the car incentive as well. Fascinating. I think, uh, I think Steady should do the car idea as well. <laughs> for attendance. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a great idea. I agree. I think Kelly agrees. I think everyone agrees, yeah. Now, Jessica's I agree because you won't really know if I'm here or not, but I will tell you I am every day. <laughs> yeah, Kelly's in Florida. Sam's working from home because of all the issues. Well, mostly the construction because it's usually too noisy around here. But anyway, okay, very good. Those are good. And I still hope you, you know, if you still have something you want to post there, that's good. Those are awesome. Um, all right. Uh, a number of years ago, I wrote an article, and there it is. You can download it. Um, but uh, uh, this first part, as I reread it, I thought, really? I had to be so negative? So I'm sorry if, it, if it's a little on the negative side. <laughs> if I rewrote the article today, it wouldn't be so negative. A district can determine the extent of its uh, teacher absenteeism problem by looking at such factors as lack of direction from school board and superintendents. See, I could probably say these a little bit better. Incomplete or conflicting board policies, administration's failure to recognize the problem. See, this is pretty negative. I'm sorry. A job dissatisfaction, incomplete record, lack of attendance monitoring, failure to recognize good attendance, and uh, obsolete leadership. Yeah, that's, that's happening here at Steady. Uh, so anyway, I don't think that, about that, Jeff. I, <laughs> you're great. <laughs> All right. But here's a little, this is a little more positive. Here's some recommendations. So your plan should include, and if you want to download the article, there's some, there's some good things in there, but uh, review your board policy, see what can be done there. Sometimes there could be some things that are uh, encouraging teacher absenteeism uh, for different reasons, but appoint an, uh, an attendance improvement coordinator uh, someone to, to look at it and as part of their job, his or her job to really focus on on get, gathering data and how to share that information. Um, in, so establish a, attendance information data system. So you've got that and sharing that information. 
uh, attendance guidelines, prepare short-term and long-term attendance improvement plans, involve teachers in this. You know, we, we have, we all have good friends who are teachers. And so we're not trying to in any way say they're bad or, or it's their fault. You know, it's part of it is the, um, I mean, it's just the system that we've, we've set up and, and uh, you know, how can we change that? What are the things we can control and can we do that? Trained administrators to work with uh, teachers and understanding buy back sick days or uh, or uh, pay or leave. Uh, there's uh, some data and some people, some districts do that. Improve working conditions if it's if that's the problem, and share data. Make sure that everybody knows what it is. You don't need to share uh, personal data, but overall aggregate data is very helpful uh, across the board. Uh, so it's just looking at it and drawing attention to it sometimes will we'll make the biggest impact. And, and if we talk about it, then we know that it's on our radar and we can help with that. Um, so that is... Uh, Jeff, one uh, other thing I thought of is, is this could be part of the sub-task force as well. We talked about this last week. Uh, one of the things you can do as a, a, a sub-department is to create a sub-task force. And this could be one of the topics of that that committee that group talks about is how to affect the teacher absenteeism. Great. Yeah, that is, uh, that's part of that group. Thank you for that. That's I have really something I was thinking of too, is that, you know, um, that the idea of the car was like, wow, you know, but that's like a one thing that one person gets, but you know, you could pit the schools against each other, the campuses, you don't know, have the principals, you know, see who, who they, you know, something that would uh, benefit the an entire you know campus so whichever campus could get the best teacher um you know or least absenteeism of their teachers because you know you know they're working together as a team on the you know at each campus maybe you know that campus might benefit in some way think it's something that's for the entire school good everybody gets a car <laughs> well, that's what I was saying. It might be hard for everyone to get a car. The whole yeah. campus has to share it. Everyone gets a day they get to drive it, uh, but something like that. Okay. So Carmen said that found that having more immediate incentives work better. See, that's good. The free jean day is what Dolores is saying. So everybody at that campus has, you know, can wear jeans for an entire week or something like that. <laughs> Good. That might, that might, something like that might work. Awesome. Well, very good. There's contact information if you want to reach out and at any time uh, to answer this or other questions, as well as uh, information about training. Uh, okay, in the chat feature, we can type in, in next week or weeks coming up if there's a topic you want us to cover and to get uh, to share go ahead and put that in your chat and we'll make sure to take note of that we want to accommodate this it's always fun we we these are fun and we're glad that you're participating it's it's um, always we learn a lot from your comments and questions and hear what's happening so uh, please feel free to type in uh, something that's on your mind. Okay, good website design. Good. Keeping our sub pool in, in the time of COVID. You know, that's interesting. What are you going to do for that? Uh, and uh, what's going to, oh, I have a, another poll. Sam, can you launch the, launch the next two polls? I can. I totally forgot, but now's a good time to ask that about that question. How confident are you that your schools will open in the fall? And then question two, if your schools will open, what percent of your students will attend? So what that and make asking, sure you scroll down and answer the other question too. Yeah. So what that's asking is, um, you know, will they all show up at the same time? Will a fifth show up on Monday, another fifth show up on Tuesday? You know, so they're coming once a week week uh, have has there been talk about that um so if if 100 percent will show up over the week but only 25 percent will show up on a given day put that 
So it's what will be in, in your school on a given day uh, of the week um, that, that you're thinking of. And, and uh, I know it, things could change rapidly. And um, if there's some other variation of that that you know your school's talking about, please put that in the chat. Okay, before you launch that, I'm going to call up also, get your feedback on this. Did that come across? Yeah. Do you guys want to talk about this while we're waiting with the poll? Yeah, I'll talk a little, a little bit. The Subsolutions 2020, we were having in Park City, uh, due to COVID-19, um, we've not, we're not able, actually, according to our governor, to actually have the meeting that we normally do the way we normally do it. So we've allotted to change it to be a Subsolutions Conference online. And, and we'll have multiple meetings throughout days that we, throughout that week, July 6th to 10th, that we will be holding webinars similar in this vein that we're doing. Uh, they'll be a little more different and, and more in depth about what we're doing and how we're uh, affecting um, the teaching that we do to help your sub, your sub department and your, and your sub managers do, do the job uh, that we recommend on, on lots of different topics and areas. But the idea is to, that we want to stretch it over that whole week, giving people time that they don't have to take every day for eight hours to do it, but you can actually um, come in during that two hour period of time and come to some meetings, some topics that you're interested in attending. So we just want, wondered what you guys thought about this, if, if that was something that was appealing, if, if, if that was something that, that um, not, not necessarily that you, you, you may want to attend, but if you just, if, if that's a good way to do what we're looking at doing instead of doing it in person. Yeah, it'll be really good. So we'll have presenters if you want to be present and you can do it right from your desk. I think this will be one of the funnest things we've done. We did this a number of years ago uh, because of uh, the economy. We just had an online webinar series for several days and it turned out really well. So uh, try to do, uh, you know, take a look at this. This is now on our website, steady.org slash sub solutions. And you can see what's there. And, and we have reduced the price, of course, right? Like there, there's a, a couple of great things about it. The cost itself is less, but also now there's no travel, right? There's no hotel. Uh, the one thing that's not great is that the interaction between individuals and groups, you know, which is what, what we are known for doing our sub solutions. But this is the best we can do to help facilitate, continue facilitating the sub solutions conference to to, um, to, the, to the nation, so. To, to we the will, day. one thing we'll do differently, this is what we're do, presenting here today is a webinar where yes, you can, your, your feedback is only um, for, uh, through the chat. With sub-solutions, however, it'll be a meeting. So we are limited to the number of people we can have online at a given time, so it will be limited. However, uh, it'll be, more interactive than than here you because we'll be able to um we'll be able to uh hear you and you can talk and we can have an open discussion so it'll be much more interactive than these webinars are it'll be a meeting so we're pretty excited about it i think it's going to be kind of fun because i think a lot of people who couldn't travel uh but could do it uh two hours a day uh for five days so there's 10 hours but that's that's good okay so here we have uh, somewhat confident, that's good. Uh, neutral, somewhat not confident, yeah. So if your school will open, so it looks like uh, 90, 80 and 90% of your students will be coming back. Okay, that's good, that's interesting. So I wonder how we can, how, how can we do that? Can I do a screenshot of that? Before we close it, yeah, I'm going to do another one. Um, I'll take care of it. Yeah, because I don't know if we have that once we close this meeting. All right, very good. Appreciate you doing that. Let's also, Kelly, um, let me call up another. I was going to ask you if you could show the picture of our giveaway page. Oh, there we go. 
Yeah, I just wanted to, to mention that in case you have not already sent out an invitation to your substitute teachers to register for our giveaway. It will go through the end of this week. So they've got the rest of today and tomorrow to uh, still register for the subweek giveaway. And those prizes are awesome. You see the grand prize is the, the Apple Watch. And then we also have the, uh, the Amazon gift cards the Kindle Fires and Olive Garden gift cards that we give away. And then we do have some smaller prizes that are more related to their work, you know, um, activity ideas and, and uh, eBooks and things like that, that we give away. So there's, there's some things that they can still win that are helpful to them. Maybe not as much fun as an Apple watch, but we do try to have as many, you know, winners as we can. And we, and we will post those winners. When we do that, we always put next to their name, which district that they are associated with. And those of you who have had somebody from your district win one of these bigger prizes, you know that I call you to find out and make sure that the, the person that's winning is really a substitute teacher and active. Of course, in this, uh, in this uh, uh, virus, uh, uh, situation that we're in, I would I would just ask if it's somebody that has been working, you know, in this school year. But uh, certainly, we want to give away these great prizes to the subs and show them our appreciation. And I hope you guys have been doing something this week to show appreciation to your substitutes too, even if it was just simply an email to them to let them know, because you know that's something that will help keep them on board for coming back next year when you need them. Is if they know that you're still considering them one of your substitutes and have appreciated the work that they've done. So. Please do that. So, so some of the attendees were asking to share to see those results again. So I just I want to share those with you again. And just scroll you down can scroll, yeah, scroll down. Did that work? Yeah, Mary asked about when the winners will be posted. Um, it, we try to get it done as soon as possible. Sometimes it takes a little longer if I'm waiting to hear back from from a district about if somebody's legit or not. And so. Um, so if I call you or email you to find that out, please let me know as quick as you can. If you're, you know, if I'm asking about one of your subs, but um, we do try to get it done within a week. Yeah, it's usually Wednesday or Thursday. So if, if we, we'll start Monday morning, calling and validating the, the entries, and then uh, post them by Wednesday. We'll send an email out. But do have do invite your subs slash giveaway Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, oh, that's good. I'm glad some of your substitutes have won in the uh, giveaway. All right. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Enjoy yes, your your day, and and uh, we will hopefully talk to you next week. See you later.